Hey everyone, I'm Taylor, and in today's video, I wanted to talk about the most important thing that's literally ever happened to me as a person, and that is that 10 days ago, I had my gender reassignment slash gender confirmation surgery with Dr. Jess Ting at Mount Sinai in New York City. Um, more specifically, I actually had a vaginoplasty as I am a male to female transgender person. Um, this has been like a really incredible journey. It's been a really long journey. A lot of people have followed me on social media and so they know a lot of the hardships, the ups and downs and the beautiful joyous moments that I've gone through getting to this point. And I'm just like so happy and I'm so generally like gender euphoric and positive to have been lucky enough to have gotten this procedure and I am truly blessed and like in, impressed with myself that my body is doing such a tremendous job at healing through this like incredibly major surgery. It is one of the biggest things that some trans people will go through. I say that because it's not something that is necessary or like think like that every trans person has to go through. For myself, I had an extreme amount of gender dysphoria for my parts below, and I really needed to make that match with my body for so, so many reasons, and that will be a different video. In this video, I actually just wanted to tell you about my journey, everything that I've gone through so far to get here, the ups and downs, and I just want to catch you up a little bit. I mean, so like about a year ago or so, um, at the beginning of 2020, I started reaching out um, to Mount Sinai in New York City, and then due to the COVID experience, that kind of pushed a lot of people back. It canceled a lot of people's surgeries, and that was really sad. And it also kind of like halted my ability to start talking to them and to start um, this whole process. Eventually, they started rebooking in August of 2020, and I started getting the ball rolling. And I constantly called them. I constantly was at doctor's appointments. I did 18 hours or so of electrolysis hair removal down below because you have to do um, that. That was like one of the most painful things of my life, like I literally go to hardcore shows and I would rather get knocked out cold than do another minute of electrolysis down there. It's just not a pleasant thing. Honestly, it was like worse to me than the pains from the surgery. Um, so yeah, electrolysis isn't fun, but it is a necessary process of this journey. So I was doing that and I was calling Mount Sinai and eventually I got my um, consultation in December. On December 3rd of 2020, it was super exciting. I had a great trip down there. I got to meet Jess Tang and a bunch of the other um, people down there, the nurses and different uh, people who are involved in the surgery and different aspects of that. And um, sure enough, when I went down there, I wasn't sure what to expect at all. Some people were telling me it would be a year out. Some people were telling me they don't know if it's going to happen. Um, but either way, I was incredibly blessed by getting a surgery date of May 12th, and that was 10 days ago. Today is May 21st, um, and it was like a long journey to get here. It wasn't easy. I had to do a lot of doctor's appointments, a lot of blood tests, EKGs, physicals, and I had a lot of things that just didn't go perfect for me that made it like incredibly stressful when I first got to New York City. Like, so basically I came here um, the Sunday before the surgery and we had to get an Airbnb, which because you live X amount away from the facility. So if anything happens to you, they want you to keep you like certain distance away from the facility. Um, so if anything happens, you can go there and you can get help there. You know what I mean? And I live so far away that I had to get the Airbnb to stay at, which I'm actually at right now. It's this lovely, cute little apartment. I love it. It's cute. It's adorable. And it's really been um, a blessing for me and my partner as I'm healing throughout this um, surgery. So after surgery, like, well, anyway, so before I jump ahead of myself, um, we get down here on the Sunday before and I had to do a bunch of tests. I come to find out that I didn't get some of my results sent over for like EKGs and physicals and uh, blood work. They did like a bunch of the blood work, but they didn't do like the blood count, which was extremely weird. So I had to, while down here, being never down here before, having to find a primary doctor. And I looked around, I looked around, there was a lot of crying. There was a lot of phone calls from the surgical coordinator saying, hey, if we don't get this in a timely fashion, we don't know if the surgery is going to happen or not. And so it was like extremely stressful for me because I'm running down in the city that I just don't know. And I'm trying to do everything I could to keep this surgery going forward. And there was moments where I really came close to giving up. It was extremely stressful and it was extremely hard on me 
to do this and make this all happen, but I did it. I found a doctor thanks to help from my partner and thanks to help from my mom for finding a good solution. And I actually went to a different uh, Mount Sinai facility and I had this tremendous doctor, Samuel Alstein, and he did um, all my blood work and EKGs and all that stuff. He sent it over. Uh, I had elevated white blood cell counts, so I had to do another test and they were still up, but they were lowering. Um, but either way, I actually, the morning of the surgery was crazy. So it's Wednesday morning. Um, we finally got all that situated. I'm going to have the surgery. So I, like a dummy, go to 10 Union Square, which is like the main Dr. Jess Ting facility that I've like gone to them for my consultation. I should have read the paperwork, but either way, I go there at like 5.20 in the morning. We get into Manhattan and we arrive at the facility. We go up into the waiting room and the gentleman tells me, you're in the right place. Sit here and wait. We wait there for about 40 minutes. Other people start showing up. And then eventually he just tells me like, you're not on this list. I don't know what list you're on, but it's not this one. So then we scramble. I have my folder, which I got um, when I was on my consultation in December, and it said Beth Israel. So we go to Mount Sinai, Beth Israel. We run there a few blocks away. We get in there, wrong place. There's another Beth, Beth Israel, Mount Sinai, right next to it. We go there, wrong place. We then go to a place that's called the Ear and Eye Infirmary or whatever, which is another facility that they have a few blocks later, and turns out that's the place. They've been waiting for me and I'm an hour late for surgery. Well, not like late for surgery, but for check-in. Luckily, I did a lot of e-check-in and stuff like that. And then my partner helped sign a lot of the forms and stuff like that. I was able to go into the other room. They gave me the different medicines. I'm talking to different nurses. Uh, Dr. Jess Tang arrived and he's like, hey, and he comes and he talks to me. And, you know, like today is the big day. And it was, you know, I mean, it wasn't a, a long exchange, but it was just basically like, are you excited? I'm excited and we're ready to do this and it's going to be great. You know what I mean? And then he had to start and getting ready and prep. I had an anesthesiologist come in and talk about the procedure, talk about the anesthesia that they were going to put into me. I had an IV put into my hand and it had like extra IV slots or whatever. And they put the, um, some level of anesthesia in me. I don't know all the technical medical terms. I don't remember them. I probably should have, but I didn't. But either way, uh, after sitting there for a while and changing into my adorable scrubs and taking a few selfies and just kind of messaging people that like it's going to finally happen, I, um get up and I walk to um, the elevator with one of the doctors or one of the um, nurses. And then eventually I go into the surgery room, which was kind of scary. Um, you see this big, huge high tech surgery room and you see all these people getting ready for surgery and they have all their gear on and you know that it's you that they're going to be working on for the next, I think it was like five or six hours or something like that. And so basically I sit down I'm telling jokes with the nurse the whole time because that's just me. That's just my personality. I love to laugh and have fun. And then I sit down and they um, kind of prop my arms up, prop my arms up, put my feet where they got to go. And then I look over at both of them and I just, the two nurses who are next to me. And I'm like, all right, guys, we're going to have a great surgery. I love you all. I'm fading away because they're putting in the anesthesia in me and I am passing out. So I pass out. And then eventually several hours later, I wake up in... Um, a bed, it was the same bed that I um, was in pre the surgery and um, it's kind of hanging out there for a little bit. They're getting ready to bring me up to the seventh floor so I can heal and that's where I'm gonna be spending the next few days. So on my way up there, I'm on this bed laying down, just had the most major surgery of my life and I'm sitting here telling jokes to people who were getting pushed past. We're in the elevator. I'm asking a random woman how her day is. And everybody's kind of like laughing and giggling. The nurses on the uh, upper floor, who, which I was staying at, treated me very well. Um, the staff was very tremendous to me. And I always had kind of like what I needed. I was able to luckily see my partner um, from three to six o'clock with her visiting hours or whatever. So I was able to see my partner for a few hours before, um, she had to go back into our Airbnb. And then she was able to come and see me same time every, all the days that I was there. Um, while I was there, I was pretty much just kind of laying there. I had a catheter and a blood back in me, which was kind of like a free flowing pee. And like the blood was just kind of doing its thing. It was sucking, it was sucking. But eventually like, it didn't really suck that much because like, I don't know, I was just healing really good. And so there wasn't a lot of like blood and eventually in the tubes you saw like dried up blood or whatever. So like, um, I kind of was like, all right, and the machine's still working, so it's doing fine. But while we were there, um, you know what I mean? That had some pretty good lunches for me. I had like this tremendous view of Manhattan every morning and every night and it was really peaceful and calm. 
they had TVs and stuff like that for you to watch, but they didn't have like cable or apps or anything. So I literally just put the little table over me with the food, but moved the food out of the way. And I just kind of propped up my cell phone and was just watching the HBO Max. And I pretty much was just watching like, this is bad, but I was just like watching Curve Your Enthusiasm. Uh, I think my enthusiasm has been curbed in this process. Um, but yeah, it's a silly show that I can just kind of watch. I can fall asleep to Larry David. I love the awkward situations, whatever. Um, so I kind of watched that mostly while I was there and just kind of read and talked to everybody on like the internet and people were like really tremendous to me. I really like value the love and support of people on my Twitter and on my Facebook and just kind of all over the place. Um, I actually had uh, Nyla Rose, who is the first transgender person to hold a major title in a major wrestling promotion. Um, she actually wrestled for AEW Wrestling and I love AEW. It's like one of my most favorite things. If you know anything about me, you know, like I'm a huge wrestling mark and I love AEW in particular. And I love Nyla Rose. And it was just amazing because she kind of reached out to me and she was like, congratulations on the surgery. And I hope you have a speedy recovery. And it was cute to have like that little time taken out. It made me feel special. It made me feel good. And then to have everybody support and just like pouring in nonstop. And on surgery pages, you have different trans people who have had different experiences at different times in that facility, at other facilities. And they're giving me tips, advice, encouragement, uh, things to like expect going forward from here. And it was just like a really exciting and um, tremendous time. Um, and it was just like very euphoric and chill and relaxing. Like I said, beautiful view of Manhattan. It was like fabulous. So the Saturday, three days after the surgery, I was discharged. So when they came in, my, my partner came in and they taught us how to work like the blood vac thing, which was pretty much at this point, just there to be there. And then the uh, catheter for the urine and all that stuff or whatever. So that was super easy. We then kind of got into the car. You have your little donut seat, which I actually have like a super dope donut seat or whatever. Like big recommend the super comfy donut seat. Like gonna need it for the surgery. It just kind of keeps everything cool so you can sit down. So you lay back in the chair, you go all the way back. Of course, I left my, um, my kitty cat, Biscuit, who was there with me the entire time. I left her and they called me up and they said, you, you gotta come back for Biscuit. So then I come back and you know what I mean? We get biscuit or whatever. It's irrelevant. Um, we drive and we get back to the apartment. And then the first few days were kind of like a lot of me laying in this bed, you know? Um, a lot of time spent in this bed. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you know what I mean? It was a lot of my partner helping me out, going to the store, getting food. We were getting food ordered in. Um, you know what I mean? And we're shopping where we can, when she can, because she's having to do a lot of different things for me. And I'm trying to be as independent as I can during this time. And then I think it was three days after being home. It was the next Friday or the next Wednesday, rather. We went back to the facility, uh, 10 Union Square, and we saw the same doctor who I saw during my consultation in December. And basically they removed the um, catheter and which was a weird feeling, very weird feeling. They removed some stitches here and there down there. Everything seems to be looking great, they said. They removed the packing because there's like this packing that's over it. So you couldn't really see it before that at that point. So it was this kind of like this packing that held the, the blood vac and the catheter and then a level of like gauze tape and or gauze and all that stuff there and whatever, safety medical stuff. And then I had a very awkward experience where I'm laying down on the table, legs up in the stirrup, and he's pulling the gauze out of my new area. Like, and there's like a lot of it and he's just like pulling. And I literally said to him, I feel like a human tissue box being untissued, you know? Um, and I was like, but it's not bloody tissues, right? It's, it's not bloody tissues, doc. Tell me that it's rainbows and unicorns and magic, right? And you know, he played along cause you know, again, I like the joke. So they like the joke too. And he's like, yeah, no, it's beautiful. There's nothing but rainbows and sunshine here. No disgusting blood that's been in there for over a week. <laughs> um, yeah, so that happened. Then they pull the um, blood vac and the catheter out. It gets disgusting. It's a very weird sensation feeling. And then uh, from then on, they're like, the nurse hands me a mirror and she's like, all right, are you ready to look at it? And my original thing was, I don't want to see her until she's looking super cute. So I wanted to wait. And she's like, no, you can't wait. You have to start dilating right now. So 
she turns and I look at I look at her and you know this puffy it's not beautiful it's not cute it's gonna keep getting cuter it's just a major super surgery all right we're not here to talk about the aesthetics or any of that stuff yet it's gonna get there but they said it looks super great for you know I me mean, having just been out of the surgery but either way so then she hands me um, some dilators which I also have here of course I do um, because you get your dilator set after uh, surgery the surgeons hand them to you and they're like hey take this and this cream and there's different gauges and sizes and stuff like that. So we skipped right past the um, the purple one and we went straight to this one. Uh, um, sorry, YouTube, I don't know if I can show these or not actually. So basically, um, they're medical uh, devices. It's a hard plastic, um, for more or less, it's um, like a dildo shaped um, object and it goes up to a certain thing. They're all the same length, but they're different diameters. And basically after surgery to keep uh, a successful surgery to have the proper depth and circumference and all of that stuff down there, you have to dilate. And they say dilate, dilate, dilate. You can never dilate enough. Basically the first week I was told to use the blue dilator for uh, three times a day for 30 minute sessions each, or you can always do more, it's not gonna hurt you. But they told me to do that until my follow up next Thursday, which we haven't got to yet. Uh, um, yeah, so they lube it up and she goes, here's Smurfat. And I'm like, wait a minute. If that's Smurfat, Smurfat must be a trans girl, right? Which kind of explains some stuff because she's like the only like girl in Smurf town and then she's a trans girl. So I think that honestly, we just kind of learned something about the Smurfs here in this whole endeavor or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do that and I dilate. It was weird. It was different. It was new. It, it's not like a pledge, like it's not, we're not there yet. You know what I mean? We'll get there. It's purely scientific and it's purely to keep everything the way it should be. So I have the proper depth and circumference in my new uh, vagina. Um, yeah. So yeah, you got to do that. We did that. And I do that a few times a day. Basically when I get home and it's time, I do one in the morning when I wake up, midday, whenever. And I do one at night before bed. You got to do it. You got to do it. It's a very like routine -y thing. Um, like I said, it's not at that point where it's not a pleasurable thing like that. It's you're doing it to make sure your body heals correctly and that you get the vagina that you want. You want a shiny new vagina, a 2021 model with no miles on it. You got to put the work in girl and you got to do the stuff and make sure that you're properly dilating and stuff. So everything's all tight and, but still not too tight. Cause that's a problem on its own. Either way, either way, I digress. So that's been a whole different experience. I've done two days worth of that so far. Um, and I've got to do it again soon. Um, once I got home too, it's been easier to like move around without the catheters. Obviously I'm gaining more and more strength each day. Right now, standing up in this video, I probably shouldn't be doing. Uh, I am standing up too because to sit down in like a sh sit down shape, it puts a lot on the abdomen and on the surgery area. So you're supposed to pretty much either stand up for X amount of time or lay down in bed most of the time i'm probably being stupid standing up this whole time and i actually couldn't physically without the pain sit down and record this video so yeah i'm standing up this whole time big whoop want to fight about it um yeah so either way when i got home you kind of slowly build strength up a little bit i'm trying to be as independent as possible i have this handy cane Thanks to my mom, definitely recommend it. And when I get home and I gotta dilate, I have what I call the dilation station. And they hand you like this pad to keep the bed protected. It's kind of like a puppy pad for lack of a better thing. And you just throw it on the bed, you throw yourself down there and you're gonna wanna have paper towels. You're gonna wanna have your dilator. You're gonna wanna have a mirror because you need to see what you're doing down there. So I put a mirror down there and I just kind of got my paper towels and the lube and you put it on the dilator and you do your thing. And then eventually you just kind of hold it in because your body's going to try to push it out. You just hold it in, your body's going to try to push it out. And then eventually it just kind of sits there. Once I do the 20, 30 minutes, then I, sometimes a lot of times I just kind of sit there and chill and I go hands free, you know, until I'm just like, all right, I'm done. Um, Yeah, I mean, going up the stairs and stuff like that isn't like, the most fun walking around isn't the most fun standing right now um but i wanted to share my experience and i wanted to really put it out there firsthand and let people know like you know this is some of the things that are involved in it there's some things that i didn't think about like lube i'm gonna have to buy it for the rest of my life 
because <laughs> you have to dilate for the rest of your life. You can decrease the dilation over time and you go up in the different sizes and you eventually personalize it to what you want for your own likes, pleasures, and needs. Um, I'll do another video down the road um, to talk about other things like why I made this decision, how I feel, maybe the aesthetics of it down the road, or I mean like as far as like anything intimate, there's no intimate things that you can do until at least three months out, but mentally and for myself and my own body, I'm giving myself longer than that. And when it feels right, it feels right to start using it. You can't have any intercourse whatsoever. So it's whatever, but you're finally more aligned. Your body's more aligned and you feel happier and you feel positive. Uh, just today, I put on my first pair of just like regular panties because I was wearing like these medical underwear um, the whole time I was here up until today. And I put them on and it was such a euphoric positive feeling to have that. And it's just hard to explain. It's hard to quantify um, just how happy that makes me feel and it's such a small little thing and I know that these it's gonna be so many of these small little things just make me feel so much positive before I used to always go out wearing certain outfits to the beach wearing things at the gym try I would never wear leggings I wouldn't wear or buy certain underwear there's so many different things that I wouldn't do because I'd always be super self-conscious and super self-aware and it would like make me feel like shit like I would always try to put my purse in front of me or something or kind of stand a certain way or sit down a certain way and just be super hyper aware of what was there before and what's not there now. Um, and I'm just like super positive and I'm super happy and, and I'm, I'm blessed to have all of you here and I'm blessed to have had this surgery and for it to be done um, and for my body to be um, healing so well. One of my nurses today, she stopped in and she even told me, considering how like long ago the surgery was, 10 days, she said, this is like one of the most in good shape, nice looking. The swelling has gone down a lot. I've done a, my two showers I've taken have been like colder showers. Um, I keep the room pretty cold just because that's how I like it. But I also kind of figured maybe it will help with swelling. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I'm not a scientist. But yeah, I mean... As far as like the healing and some of that, like it's weird because like you have all these different nerve endings and stuff down there and throughout this whole process, I'm just kind of feeling everything differently. Like it's first you feel like your body kind of healing or trying to understand or you really have these nerve wires that are like, what's going on? And it's still trying to learn. And from what I hear is that's going to keep changing throughout this whole process. So I'll share some of that as it goes on. Right now, it's very much like a surgical area. I see it as a surgical area. You know what I mean? She's not like ready for her grand debut yet. And she's still healing. And we're going to give her time. And she's going to look pretty and beautiful. And she already looks pretty cute. I'm super happy that I had this experience. I'm super happy that my body is taking it so well. And I can't wait to do more of these videos. And maybe if you have some questions... Uh, as long as they're not like too inappropriate or too, too crazy, um, you can send them to me and we can talk about it in a video and I can discuss what I feel open and comfortable with discussing. I try to put this out here and put this information out there. So it's told from like a real person. Like there's me, there's a lot of people on there too that I see on YouTube and stuff are like these privileged, um, very beautiful, very passable um, privileged girls who go out and they have their surgeries and they tell their experience and it's not always like the same as everybody else's and even my experience isn't going to be the same as anybody else's but it's my experience and I wanted to put it out there as pretty much like an average person because not all of us have wealth or privilege and you know what I mean if this is extremely hard for a lot of us I spent like all of my money that I had ever saved up my entire life and I was extremely frugal my entire life and I did crowdsource funding, which you guys donated to and helped out with. My family helped out so much. has been there for me so much. My partner has been there for me. Everybody's been like really tremendous to me and it means the world to me. And I need you to know how much that means to me because it's helped a lot. Because this has been hard. It's been really hard. It's an emotional journey. It's a physical journey. It takes a lot out of you as a person. Oh, fuck. And you, it takes 
it just takes an emotional toll as much as it does a physical toll. And I just wouldn't be able to be here without you. And I appreciate you. And I should probably end this video before I start crying too much more. And I'll just make another video. Um, either way, thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of my life and being a part of my journey. If you ever need help, if you ever feel like you need to reach out, if you ever feel different, if you ever feel normal, I don't care. If you need somebody to talk to, reach out to me. I'll try to be here for you. I'll try to make time. I just want to be a positive example for everybody. Get out. Do the thing. Don't keep sitting down on the bed. Unless you have to. But as soon as you're comfortable and as soon as you have your strength, get up. Do the thing. Don't hold yourself back. Do it. Life's too fucking short. Okay? I'm Taylor One Shot. Love, peace, and chicken grease. I'm out. Bye!